Hello and welcome today. We're going to take a look at Dominions 5 Warriors of the Faith. Dominions 5 is a it's a 4x fantasy game. If you're not familiar with the Dominions series, a, a very very complex and uh, an in-depth fantasy game, 4x game. The uh, it's been developed by Ill Winter Game Design. Came out on Steam about a month ago, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and check the thing out today. And uh, we're actually gonna do a series on this one because I mentioned complexity. There's a lot in this game. And half this first episode is going to be kind of trying to explain the, the background and what the game's all about. And I can't, I can't do it in one episode. So we're going to turn this into a full series. We'll play it through the whole thing and see what we can do with the game. But let's get the basics down. Dominions is all about be, being a god and running a, uh, a fantasy race, a nation of people that you try to, that you want to, well, run over the land, convert the land to your, uh, your bidding. Whether you want to be a uh, maybe a nature god, maybe you want to be an undead, a race of undead folks that can raise uh, raise skeletons and take over the world that way. Whether you are maybe uh, throwing out fireballs and teaching your priests how to do that, that may be your thing. But there's a ton of depth here and a ton of complexity. But we're gonna try to keep it simple and run through a, a very uh, basic game to kind of get an idea of what is happening here. But let's go ahead and jump into the thing and try it out and see what we can do here. First off, let's go ahead and jump in and and take a look at the different nations here. This is one of the things, there's a ton of lore to the game. If you're familiar with the older Dominions, you'll probably be familiar with a lot of this stuff. There's a lot of mythology in this. Uh, like we have Frost Giants from Jotunheim. We have uh, there's some Babylonian things in there. We have like the ancient China myths and, and races. All the different races have sort of their own stories and their own flavor. Depending on who you play, there's a ton of replayability here because whoever you play is going to be completely different. Whether we choose someone like Man, the Tower of Avalon, these are your your, your basic humans. They uh, you know you got things like Longbowmen, you have Swordsmen, you've got Horsemen. They, this is your basic people for the game. Someone that's a little bit more understandable, I think, for me. That's who we're going to be playing today because it's a little bit easier to get into. I've actually never played uh, Dominions before. This is the first Dominions game I've played. Uh, I own Dominions three and four. I bought them back on the Steam sale forever ago. I just never played the game. I've, I've watched some other folks play the games, and I've always wanted to get into it. I just never have, but uh, I guess this is the chance. Anyway, so humans, uh, the, the, there's a few different kinds of human tribes. With man, this is our basic folk. We also have things like the Ash... No, no, not them. The Old Kingdom play a little bit more... Uh, maybe a little more Mediterranean style of, uh, like, Bronze Age Mediterranean. You can see we got, like, uh, um, hoplites, and we've got elephants, and we have chariots. That's their, sort of their uh, their style. Um, or you can go to the other side of the spectrum. And we can come down here. The Land of the Apes. These are a bunch of monkey people. Monkey people. Uh, and they all have different abilities. Of course, they have different and different strengths and weaknesses. Um, we've got... Here's Jotunheim. These are the giants. These are like the frost giants in the game. Uh, speaking of frost giants, we can have like goblins riding on moose. Of course we can. Uh, we can go down here to uh, Uruk is more the Babylonian, Babylonian myth. As you can see, we've got the uh, sort of the Mer folk, I guess, is what that's going on here. Um, and, and Kidu. Uh, we've got Atlantis, Kings of the Deep, would be sort of like the uh, the Shamblers of Atlanteans. We have a Lizardman. We have Ryla. These, I guess, are the Lovecraftian kind of things. We've got Illithids, and we have uh, Deep One hybrids and. And, uh, again, more fish folk. Now, the thing about these, these are an underwater race. So these folks are going to be completely different than the, uh, the man folk because they're going to be living underwater. they be building their bases underwater and sort of having that sort of a focus for, uh, for that kind of people. We also have more myrmidons, the mer folk live underwater. Uh, but yeah, just a ton of different ways of playing the game. And that's not it because you don't only just pick your people. You also have to pick your god. And it kind of plays out, I guess, like Master of Magic, where you've got your god who has certain abilities. Maybe your god is a, um, maybe he's a death god, and his thing is, is raising the dead. But maybe you want to play as the, I don't know, the mer people. Not really associated with the death folk, but you can put that ability in there and then have your, uh, your priest have the ability to raise the dead and maybe play as an undead water race. Um, yeah, so we'll get into all this and we'll try to explain it as we go into it, but... We're going to jump into a random map. We're going to do a small game. Uh, this is all looking okay. Game name is going to be called uh, YouTube. Now, another thing. I didn't mention this with the different races. 
is there's an early, middle, and late age thing with all the different lore. So maybe some, maybe your people will be in the early age, but not in the middle ages because maybe they combined with someone else. Maybe they got destroyed by someone. Maybe the lizardmen destroyed you, and so they're not. You're not here in the middle ages. Middle ages anymore. It also changes the way the game plays because early ages is more about having magic, and uh, mages are the powerful folk in the early ages. Later on, iron and steel becomes a thing, and so it's more about. Uh, what am I trying to say? Forged materials and armies rather than magic. We'll stick with the Middle Ages here to keep it somewhat somewhat simple. I'm on a very small map, so we probably should only do two people. We're going to do three, though, because it'll make it a little bit more interesting, I think, just to make it uh, exciting anyway. And I'm going to go ahead and choose the Tower of Avalon. We're going to keep it kind of boring here, but uh, I think it's going to be a little bit more understandable as we jump in here. Rather than having, like, I don't know, monkey people, we'll go with regular folk. I don't care who I play against, this is fine. And these are my people. Uh, you can see everyone has different stats. They all have different abilities. They have different... Uh, well, they have different abilities there. They have different skills. They have different attack and, and, and defense abilities. They cost different amounts. There's a gold and a resource uh, and recruitment point are our uh, resources. Um, this guy he costs 40 bucks to train. He doesn't have a lot of resources because he just has leather things. So that's kind of where that comes in. And recruitment points is basically how good the guy is. So, for instance, this... Uh, oh, he's only one also. But he's a lot more expensive. This Knight Commander of Avalon. Uh, he also has this recuperation skill and force survival. But he's basically a leader. He's a leader on, on a horse. Lord Warden, same thing. He's a leader on a horse. This guy is sacred, which means that he is extremely devoted to the god's cause, can be blessed, and only require half the usual cost to maintain. Um, yeah. Um, oh, two different works we got. So we have commanders, we have units. Commanders would be like our heroes and our leaders. Um, another thing, we can actually forge weapons and armor and shields and give them to these heroes. Uh, we got with a unicorn, by the way. And make them even cooler. The units are going to be the, the grunts of the battlefield. They will be led by one of our leaders. Uh, and these guys, first, for instance, we got a longbowman. Typical longbowman. He's pretty cheap. He, uh, he does a bit of damage with his, with his longbow. Yeah, and they, you know, your basic archers. You can have, no, uh, this is what, a Warden of Avalon. Where's my, um, here he is, Tower Guard. This guy has the ability of being a good defender. So that's kind of how that plays out. Um, now, the next big part of the game, probably the biggest part of the game, and that is choosing our god, our um, pretender god is what this is called. Now, there's a ton to this. And first off, we're going to choose our physical form. This is what kind of god are we? Are we just going to be sort of like a, uh, like a, maybe just a sorceress? Maybe it's all we are, just some measly person that just sort of walks among the troops. Maybe we're a, uh, maybe we're a dragon. Some sort of powerful unit that walks among the troops. Or maybe we're a little bit of both of those. Or Dominion 4 would be like the guys that don't move. They just sit back and they just spread their uh, their blessings upon the priests, and the priests sort of do their thing. I think I'm going to go with... I mean, I was going to go with Tree, because I uh, I watched Daz Tastic's tutorial, and that's what he picks, so I kind of have an idea how that works out well. Um, but I'm thinking I'm going to go with a dragon, just because, I mean, I mean, it's a dragon. So if I do a dragon, I'm going to have to do a little bit more... I guess throw him out there to do some damage. Uh, and you can see his hit points compared to the other guys. He is... A good fighter. He also has all these different abilities. He's poison resistant. Uh, he has a fear ability. He can shape changer. Turns into another shape uh, in time. I guess if he gets hit, he'll he'll change into a different shape. He can swim. He can fly. He's a dragon master. So yeah, this might be all right to have a dragon on my side. He has points in the magic uh, realm or in the nature realm of magic. So we're gonna get a few more into there, and you'll see why in a second. That because he is a nature dragon, that means we can give him certain bless effects. So whenever my creatures get blessed, they get this ability. Uh, we can give them things like, maybe we give them bark skin. Uh, receive a, a, uh, a bark-like skin. Very difficult to damage. Just gives us more defense. We can give them regen. So people will, uh, will heal up in time. I'm going to try the bark skin way. Actually, we'll do something like this. Like, we'll keep six of those, and we'll give them bark skin. So once we get blessing out, we'll get our priests out there. They'll throw blessing on my soldiers. Then they will get bark skin, thanks to the dragon. Um, the, the biggest part of this is probably the dominion here. I mentioned that we are a god and we're trying to spread our faith across the lands. The more that our faith spreads, the more that these come into play. Things like the productiv productivity of the land. Things like the, um, 
what is it, the growth of the land. You can also go with death. Like, say you want to go with maybe a completely evil people. They don't need to have humans in their lands. They just bring skeletons in. So that doesn't matter. So you can kind of see how this is all can get tweaked um, a lot. We have only 25 points to spend. Down here, we can choose whether our god, our, our well, our pretender god, begins awake. So he can go out on the first turn, rampaging and, and spitting his, his poison gas wherever he goes. Or we can have him sit for a year. Or we can have him sit for three years. Uh, since we got a small map with, with three people, we're going to sit on awake. Which means I can't really do much here. But if I could put him dormant, I could put a lot more abilities into this. So it's kind of a balance on what you want to do with your, your god here. Because uh, I can't do another one. So we can take a hit on something. Like maybe turmoil. We have a little bit more unrest. Recruitment points is down. Mm. Do we want to do that? Yeah, what the heck. What the heck? And we'll put another point into this one, which will give me income and supplies and resources. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. This needs to be up a lot, a lot further. Something like that, I think. Okay, we'll do five. And we'll do one there. That'll work. Okay. Our god's name is Zvid Zvidgar. Zvidgar. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. All praise. Zvidgur. Okay, so we got one province starting with. We have... I'm going to go ahead and put... Thrones of Ascension. So this is how you win the game. You can... Of course, you can kill everyone. Or you can take... There's three points on the map. Three Thrones of Ascension. You conquer all those three. You win the game. Okay. And... I think that's what I want to do. Okay. Let's start this thing up. So we're going to build our map. There's only only ten regions. Or there's there's not a ton of regions in the game. And there's going to be three of us there. Now we're going to start in one province. And you'll see this is going to be like our capital building. And our goal is to spread out and claim more. The more regions we claim means more money. means more resources that we can use to build more units. Those units will spread out. It kind of looks like... You know what the game map looks like? It looks like Centurion. Remember so that, that old Roman game from... What, like 1990 Centurion, where you know, the Roman army is spreading across the lands. It even kind of plays out. The battles kind of play out like that. But that's the way the game plays. And uh, as soon as this is done loading, we will jump in here and get started. All right, so we have a few messages here. These are just sort of giving us a story of what's going on. Age of Chaos has ended. Now the wheels turn with the Supreme God has suddenly disappeared. We're here. Ascension Wars begin and here we are. Okay, so we are up here in the top right corner. This is us. This is our army of, of folk. This is the whole land. It's a small map, so there's not a whole lot here. The, the, these things here. These are the Thrones of Ascension the capture points. There's one right next to us. How lucky can you get? So they're probably going to be a little bit tougher to take, so maybe not so lucky. But it'll be nice and next to us. There's one right down here as well. There's different regions on the map. For instance, this is a, a farmland, which means we get a lot of money out of that one, but low resources out of it. Uh, we've got this one over here, which is going to be a high resource spot, but low income spot. So we want to sort of spread our army around, trying to collect resources up and claim lands in order to be able to build more folks. Uh, right now we have Zvidgur, our hero, our god, our, our pretender god is right here with us at the moment. We're going to send him in to go do some killing, I guess. Um, we've got, who are you? The royal forester. He can sneak. He's stealthy. Which means that he can go and sort of run around, right? Because right now there's there's other armies, there's neutral armies in these neighboring lands. We can um, we were gonna fight them and take them and take their homes, but first we gotta see what's going on. We can send him in to go do some sneaking around. Uh, we've got Wield here, who is our leader, our main leader guy. We can give him uh, things in time if we want to. Actually, I guess we can do it right now. Forge a magic item. Like I can give you a club. We need more. Uh, we need more gems before we can do that. But we'll we'll get there. <laughs> um, I think maybe we should just let him do the leading. I think. Um, so first off, let's go ahead and recruit some units. So we've got 400 gold, 89 resources, two commander points, and some recruitment points and some holy points. We're going to bring in somebody that's going to do some researching. We also need to bring in a priest, Mother of Avalon. I think she's a good researcher. She's also make a good priest. Priest level one. Can I get any better than that? It's going to be as good as we're going to get. Sacred. Nature, art, magic. She's really good. But I can't make her. She's four commander points. It'll take her a couple turns to make her done, get her done. So we're going to bring in the Mother of Avalon first. She's going to do some uh, some researching. We're going to get another one as well as a priest. We're going to make two of those. Next turn we'll get 
her. Um, we got plenty of... Well, we actually don't have any gold left. Might I spend it all on her? Um, so we're going to... Well, we got 10 gold. We can make... We can bring in... A long spear. One person. Mm, I changed my mind. Let's bring in a couple more spears and a couple of archers. There we go. There's a bit of an army. We can bring in... Um, some warriors also. Nope. No warriors. We can't afford the warriors. So that'll be nice. That'll be a nice set for our first unit. We'll, we'll link them up with... Uh, maybe with the dragon. Or maybe with Sigurd. And do some, uh, do some killing. So I think that's all we need to show off for. Who are we fighting against? Uh, this is Asphodel and Oceana. Oceana. Interesting. Oh, these are the Mer people. Ravenous deep ones. Consumed fish and kelp alike. Interesting. And who are you? You are the like the satyrs and the centaurs. Okay. I wonder where the water guy is starting at. I mean, I guess we anywhere around here. Okay, interesting. Uh, luckily, the Thrones of Ascension are all on the land, though. So let's go ahead and spend our turn and see what happens. Um, uh, you know what? What I could do with you, I could have you just sit back and do some research for now. Just for you know, maybe a turn or two. Do some research. Uh, and speaking of research, let's do some of that. We want to get some construction done. So we can build some fancy forts. Um, and we're also going to work on... I don't, we'll do that for now. That'll work. Okay, next turn. Uh, yeah, he's not doing anything. It's fine. Proclamation from Asphodel. Peleus, the Minotaur Lord, shall hereby be known as the Prophet of Dirk. So their god is here. Same thing that happened to me. Okay, so now that a turn has passed, we can actually see around a little bit. In these neighboring territories, we can see there's a hundred enemy units here. Barbarians, light infantry, and archers. There's a lot of folks there. Down here, we've got only 30 enemy units, militia, light infantry, and heavy infantry. We can easily walk into that place. And down here at Urfel, we have 40 enemies with wolf tribe warriors and wolf tribe archers. You can already see these candles. These candles that we have placed around here. This is my my influence. And the more candles that are there, the more that my things like my growth and my productivity will start to happen. Uh, that those, those scales that I chose on the God page. That's why I choose those. So and in time, those will grow up. My, these lands will get better. This one you can see is giving me lots of money, and lots of uh, lots of supplies and resources. As the um, as these go up, we'll get more out of that. And uh, 88 income isn't bad, actually. 52 resources out of that one. So yeah, I think our first conquest is going to be this one here in the mountains. You can't walk through... Well, maybe you can. I don't think you can walk through these mountains, but I guess maybe you can can't walk through here, but you can walk through over here. Our first place to conquer is going to be... We're going to grab old Weald here. And we're going to bring up an army with him. He can, he can command three units. I kind of want to bring the dragon in, really. Let's bring you guys. You guys go join them. I want you to join them. And... Hmm. We'll, let, we'll save the dragon. We probably should run him around. I think that's the idea when you have the dragon is to kind of do a big rush, an early rush. You charge through and, and, and uh, try to conquer early on. But we'll save him for a minute uh, until we get some more, uh, more capable units. Now, we don't actually control the fight. We sort of tell our guys what to do. So these are the spearmen. The spearmen, we want to stand up you know, near the front lines. And we're going to tell them to attack... Anybody, closest enemy, just take out whoever you can get. And then the archers, they're gonna set, they're gonna, they're going to attack. Same thing. Uh, enemy archers, I think, is gonna be your main goal. Uh, just attack anybody. I don't, just do whatever you would do. And I can tell them where to go to. We can tell that we can tell them to go into, I don't know, like a, a line. Put them in a line back here behind these guys. And our leader is gonna be. Whoops. Can I select you? Uh, nope. There you go. I want you to be... I'll just come up here and be with these guys. Okay. So there we go. There is our formation. Um, okay. So we're going to send them into combat. Into the Barren Crags. Owned by Independence. We're hoping to take this place. We should be an easy take. And we will take 
uh, these resources and start adding it to our own treasury. Now, there's another thing in here. There's another resource, which is gems. Gems we use in time to start creating things like I showed before. We can start showing off um, forging magic items. And um, we can do that by grabbing gems, which we'll get there in time. Uh, but for now, we're going to go kill somebody. Um, oh, yeah. Where is you? Um, go walk over here. Go ahead and sneak. He's sneaking over there. He's a sneaky guy. Uh, I forgot we also have Aofi, who is going to become a priest. And become a prophet. Now, by being a prophet, she's going to help spread in our influence and, and tell people the good news of Dragon Zvidgar and hopefully spread our influence into the neighboring lands. By this being in here, it's going to help our, um, our ability to, to conquer them as well. Next turn. Okay, there was a battle at the Barren Crags. Let's watch it. Okay, so we uh, we lost five longbowmen. We lost one longspear. They lost everybody. We won. Let's view the battle. This is the exciting battle map. And there's my spearmen up in the front line. We got the archers charging as well. We got my commander here in the back. And we are fighting against these guys here. So pretty much the same thing as me. Swordsmen, um, spearmen. We can charge in there. We can actually see what's going on. We can see these guys. and can see their health in, in time. And there's the main battle. My archers charged up in the front, didn't they? Why'd they do that? Maybe we should just tell them to hold and attack. Might be a better idea. Rather than, you know, charging in and dying. And there we go. And we got him. Okay. And there we go. We now own this land. So this is now has my green banner. It's now mine. Let's add some defense here. So now we can defend the place and just in case something terrible happens. Keeps the unrest down. And uh, we already have three candles here. Three influence here. So we've, we're actually turning this into a nice place. 110 units is going to be a while, a while before we can get into there. Because of our profit, we are spreading some more influence over here. Can't see anyone else yet, but there are other folks around. There's probably one, well, it's probably going to be on the ocean, I guess. Another one's going to be, who knows? Who knows? We'll see them in time. But they're going to be another race, just like we are with the different folks. We saw them before. Um, in the... Let's go here. Let's recruit some units. And let's bring in... I want to bring one more of these in. And have another researcher, so we can get some of the research moving along. And I think we're going to bring in warriors, archers, um, not the archers. There we go. That'll work. Okay. We'll team them up with the knight next turn. Now, these guys, we can actually move them around a little more if we want to. What do we have down here? 40. These going to be pretty easy to take. No problem. We should do it. So I want you... What are you defending? You're supposed to be... Oh, I turned you into a prophet. So I want you to... Um, increase the dominion strength in the current province. Dominion strength can be increased to a maximum equal to twice the level of the priest, plus one in temple or present. I don't think you can do any more here. I can move you somewhere else. Uh, I can also search for magic sites. Now, I'm actually going to move you down here. Yeah, you Search for magic sites. Eh, I didn't put the wrong button. Go down here. Search for magic sites. These magic sites are going to allow us to hopefully find some more gems in time. That's the, that's the idea there. So, um... Now, uh, I think what we'll do is we'll send these guys. They're in good shape. Let's go ahead and just walk into here and take this one out also. I think we're okay to leave the uh, the unrest. We can move it. Move it up to 9, up to 10. It's going to cost me some money, but it'll reduce the reduction, uh, the unrest a bit. So we'll do that. Okay. Um, where is he at? Oh, there he is. Come over here. Cross the bridge. You can't really cross rivers normally, but you can cross the bridge. Okay. There was a battle in Urfel. And we lost five longbowmen again. And two spearmen. I forgot to change their uh, their orders here. But we still wiped them all out. We can watch it again if we want to see the battle. But it's going to be the same thing. They all charged in and my archers were done. Well, they had archers too, so they kind of mowed me down that way. You can see they have folks that are casting spells, which is what we should be doing too. To help our guys out, we can be blessing them and giving them the ability to have regeneration. 
There we go. We won. Famous hero. Stories of Wield here's brave deeds and his heroic endurance are now told by bards and storytellers all over the world. Yeah, he's a fine guy. Fine guy. He's standing right here. My army has sort of been weakened quite a bit. Um, we can see all that's really left. There's not, there's not much left here. Well, we kind of whooped that last time. But we got another army over here. And uh, we can get a leader and we can send them off to join up somewhere else. we got to build up an army and take this one out eventually. But we'll get there. And I want to send... What do we have over here? Not much of anything over here. You come look over this way. And uh, and there we go. I think it's a good, good place for a cut for the first episode. I think we've covered the basics. Now we can finally properly get into the game. So anyway, this is Dominions 5 available uh, on Steam. I'll put a link in the description. You can check the thing out. Thanks again for watching. I will see you next time.